Hey everyone, it's Nylight9, and with the anniversary coming up, I wanted to do a couple of videos featuring weapons and featuring gear, so that anybody who's newer especially can have a pretty good idea of what kind of things are out there, what they might be wanting to go for, etc. And so I'm going to try to break this down as quickly and concisely as I can, um, just noting that for some of the characters I don't play, I don't have access to as much, but I will try to mention any weapons that I think are noteworthy while I do this. And this is kind of a big undertaking, but uh, I really do think that it's good information for people to have. And without further ado, I'm gonna get underway. Starting off, we're gonna go over Cloud. And the one thing I'm gonna mention about Cloud is that he is notable for being a good physical DPS character. He also has decent elemental coverage, although uh, some of his elemental weapons are a little bit outdated because he got them in the very beginning of the game. And so I would be, you know, looking for stronger weapons maybe down the line and some of these elements or, you know, maybe magical coverage if that ever happens for him. But at the moment, mostly physical DPS. Um, looking at the first few of these on the list, these four or five are all free weapons and none of them are really bad, uh, but noting that basically a lot of his free weapons have magic attack and not many of his featured weapons or weapons that, you know, you had to actually pull for have much magic attack on them. I'm going to start with Mirasame. I do believe this was the number one weapon on everybody's reroll list when the game first started if you were a day one player. The fact that it has 750% physical lightning damage at OB10 uh, makes it still relevant. Not as good as some of the other lightning weapons that have come out, but it's still pretty good. Uh, 43 physical attack, 39 lightning potency is, I mean, pretty solid. 636 physical attack here. I've got it level 110 at OB10. Uh, it's a great weapon. Another good one that came out shortly after that was Maritime Sword. This is his water weapon, and it's very similar. Uh, here you can see I've got it at 620%, but if we pull up the actual card, at max it does 750% physical water damage. It's got the same kind of stats with physical attack and water potency. Uh, I didn't mention it, but both of these weapons also have a sigil boost uh, in the breaking slot on the support materia. And that's always good, especially for a physical DPS unit. Um, coming along here, this is a weapon that we've been able to pick up for free. The Buster Sword, honestly, I think it's very noteworthy because even on its own, 750% physical non-elemental damage isn't that bad. Uh, the fact that it also has a sigil break innately in it is, is also decent. And I find this weapon to be a great sub-weapon. The HP and the attack are very nice because Maxing physical attack or magical attack is usually pretty simple and then the attack stat, right, or that attack R ability is kind of the next thing we usually start looking to. And so this usually fills a pretty good role for sub weapons. The next weapon I'm going to go over just because it's up here on the list is Sky Splitter. And this weapon is also quite good. 850% uh, physical fire damage. You can see that this came out around New Year's. And so they'd already started, you know, the power creep had been setting in. So this one is going to do 100% more of that elemental damage than Mirasame or Maritime Sword. It's got uh, 43 physical attack, 39 fire potency, at least where I have it at OB10. Uh, 643 physical attack is good here. It also has a sigil boost, and I think this is a very good weapon. Um, of note for my account is that Cloud is the first character that I've been able to max and, uh, and our ability as far as um, the fire potency. He was the only person at the moment that I can get all the way down to, I think it's 120% bonus to your fire damage. And I think that's pretty cool. Um, coming along here, kind of like honorable mention, but I think Apocalypse is, is something that is worth mentioning. It's not one of the first uh, weapons I would pick up for him, but 940% physical non-elemental damage at OB10 is, is still pretty strong. Uh, as a sub-weapon though, especially for wind, it is quite good. 40 attack with 36 wind potency is something I'm almost always putting in on a wind DPS unit. And so for that reason, I think that that is something that's worth picking up on like a second or third tier. 
Uh, here, I'm just gonna mention Crystal Sword. I don't ever use this on Cloud, but it is his AoE heal weapon. And for that reason, I think it's noteworthy. Um, <clears throat> coming down, there, he has some utility stuff. Uh, some of it's, it's mostly not what I'm trying to do on Cloud. And I don't know that a lot of people are. Um, so I'm gonna kind of gloss over most of those, except for Bandage Sword. This is a weapon that actually was really critical in trying to clear a lot of content around the time that uh, Bahamut came out. Because sometimes you realized that you need a DPS unit to be a little bit more flexible than straight DPS. So this having the uh, Sanctuary ability, which is a mid potency magic defense increase to all allies, which goes up to high potency at OB6, uh, was and I think still is in the right fights quite useful. The R abilities are also pretty useful. The Ice Resist, a little bit less so, but the HP is always something that's important for clearing content. And so I do think that that is a pretty good weapon. Uh, Zidane Sword, this was the bread and butter of Cloud for a very long time. When the Final Fantasy IX collaboration came out, this weapon was, and it was just considered broken, right? At OB10, 1300% physical non-elemental damage for 4 ATB and a 10% crit rate on that was just really bonkers. Uh, the R abilities stack perfectly with it, with that physical attack and physical ability potency. It also has a sigil boost, and it was a weapon that everybody wanted to get. Although, if you didn't pull for it on the latest banner, not something you're going to be able to get with vouchers. Along the same line, Stream Saber, this was the first weapon that allowed Cloud to really excel as an ice uh, elemental DPS. The But mostly this weapon is great to pick up in general because of the boost physical attack to all allies and is one of the only reasons that I have that at 120, even though I don't have any of his other weapons there. Um, Hard Edge, I guess, would probably be the last thing I really want to say, uh, just because of the armor break, that is sometimes quite nice. Being able to lower physical defense on an enemy as a physical DPS unit can sometimes be very valuable. And so that's going to kind of round out the list. Uh, another kind of honorable mention is Nail Bat here. This weapon, uh, I haven't really seen anybody using it yet, but that's just because, you know, it, it kind of came out only a couple months ago with guilds. But the fact that at OB-10, we're looking at 1600% physical non-elemental damage. Uh, that's the the, mo the highest C ability that we've had for damage in the game thus far. And so that is something I think that is kind of interesting. As far as what I'd be looking to pick up with vouchers on Cloud if I didn't have, uh, you know, some of these weapons maxed, I, I would say Sky Splitter would be a high priority. Uh, Mirasame still pretty good. Maritime Sword pretty good. Uh, bandage sword also pretty good those would be probably like my top weapons that i would go for i wouldn't go for buster sword because you can get those with uh crisis metals and that is cloud oh one last thing there is one weapon that i did not mention it's because i don't have it it's called glavinous sword it is a limited weapon as well it came out during the monster hunter collab and it is actually probably like one of cloud's very best weapons at OB10, it does 850% physical non-elemental damage to a single enemy. It also decreases their um, physical defense by mid-potency, and if he's above 50% HP, raises his own physical attack high potency starting at OB6. I think that weapon kind of defines Cloud's role in this game up to this point as a physical DPS unit, and... Um, he also definitely excels, you know, specifically too at non-elemental damage when needed. Kind of a weird cut here, but I didn't actually uh, record an outro for Cloud's video because originally I had the crazy idea that I was going to pack all of these weapons into one video with the goal somehow of doing two to three minutes per character. Obviously, I don't know what I was thinking. That's really not possible to do any justice to these weapons or these characters. So uh, this is the outro. I'm recording it later, but uh, I'm going to try to keep the outros as short as possible just because obviously I'm going to be putting out a ton of these videos uh, in a pretty short period of time. But I wanted to start with Cloud just because I think ever since the you know original Final Fantasy VII came out, Cloud has been the poster boy for the game. I think 
he's the most recognizable, maybe aside from Sephiroth, except for, you know, I remember even as a kid, like seeing all the magazines and everything, it was always Cloud featured prominently, you know, on the cover or in the pictures of articles. So it just felt like Cloud needed to be the first one done. And now that I've said that, I just want to say thanks for watching.